We are so excited to finally have a DJ in our studio. Sharon, Mike, we've talked about giving tips and information about choosing your DJ, your music, all kinds of things. And finally, I got my friend Todd White with Spin Around Sound DJs. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly how long I've known him, but we go back quite a quite a ways, it's almost 20 it's years. It's been a while, yeah. Goodness. So, Todd, thank you so much for coming in to spend right. some time with yeah. us. Thanks for having me. Mike, Sharon, do you all want to get a word in before I let him introduce himself? I'm just so excited to have Todd on and especially to have a DJ on, a professional DJ, because as a wedding planner, I think that's one of my absolute most important hires. It doesn't matter how pretty I make a reception. It doesn't matter how gorgeous Mike does the florals. None of that matters because people are going to leave that reception and they're going to remember if they did not have a good time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's Honestly, it's one of the absolute, I think, major players in a wedding is that good DJ hire. I mean, Mike, you've been doing this longer than me, but they certainly, they set the tone. They sure. set the tone, plus they kind of run the show 100%. When, it, when it comes to the reception. That's where they kind of take over. So I'm excited to hear what Todd has to say, that what he likes and doesn't like about running a reception. My favorite time of the night is when I know I can, all the formalities are done, and I can look at that DJ and give and them a say wink. take over. And be, they're all yours, big guy. Have at it. And Wait, also get me something to eat. <laughs> Is Sharon referring, referring to kind of letting go? I, if I, if you have some DJ, I can let go. Yeah. Sharon. I'm glad go. we have this on film. But Todd, honestly, <laughs> she set the bar high. She even, I didn't call you a professional I DJ. There's a difference. There's a difference. There, that is so important. Todd, real quick, introduce yourself to our audience. Absolutely. So Todd White has been around sound. Um, we have been uh, in the business since 2000, so February of 2000. From Southern Indiana, been here, um, you know, lived here all my life. So we've just served from, um, from Southern Indiana at this basically ever since we, we started this business back in 2000. So, Sharon, what I really liked about having Todd on is, yes, weddings are a big part of his business, but he also does other types of events. And when you have someone that has done it for as long as Todd has, he's probably seen it, done it, heard about it, all found the good, way around it. <laughs> and found a way around it, as yeah. we say. So, where, where do you want to start? Well, so if, if you are an engaged couple, Mm -hmm. And you're coming in, maybe you don't have a wedding planner. Sure. You don't have someone to tell you what to ask. What are some major things that a couple should know about their DJ before they sign on that dotted line? Well, honestly, I think some of the, the major things they need to know is, you know, how long they've been in business. What kind of reviews do they have? Um, you know, what areas they specialize in and what all they're going to handle. So there's a couple of different types of DJs in my mind. There's DJs that come in, they sit back behind their booth, and they pretty much let the bride and groom run the night and kind of ask them over and over, okay, what do we do next, what do we do next? Um, and then there's DJs that take the lead and run the show. If there isn't a wedding planner, um, you know, they, they take care of everything. So I think they really need to know, you know, who they're hiring and what all they're going to cover and what all they're going to do for them. Wow, that is really important because back in the day when I was actually a, a wedding professional, I hadn't even thought about it, but there are a lot of DJs that just focus on the music they're playing. Absolutely. And, okay, I'm supposed to make a few announcements. Sure. But what you're saying about taking the lead, like that that's really that MC role mm -hmm. That I like how you said that about taking control and sure. really the flow of it. Sharon, you've said something about that before. That's so important to keep your guests entertained, the, all the interaction happening. That falls on that DJ. Well, I've been to a lot of weddings, too, where, like you said, some DJs stand behind the booth and just play some music. Some people, some DJs take control and run the whole thing. I feel like it's a personality thing with bride and grooms interviewing you, just like I interview an employee. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I would like to make sure that my DJ entertains, not just pushes a button, mm -hmm. entertains and interacts with the gift and that kind of thing. Sure. 
And I, I just think that's real important to get that out there to let them know what they need to do. Sure. Absolutely. Instead of saying, okay, we'll just call this person and let it be done. There's yeah. music and that's it. That's right. There's more to it than just that. A ton more to it than just that. Yes. So what I'm hearing you all say is for an engaged couple that's listening, you need to express or talk to each other about what you all want for your night. Do sure. you want someone to take the lead? Do you want somebody that really leads the way so you all can enjoy the night? A lot of times we hear from engaged couples, they don't know what they don't know. I get asked all the time, you know, budget's a big thing. Mm -hmm. And brides will say, well, can I just have a friend come and play music? What you do know? you say about that, Todd? Can I just create a playlist? <laughs> I know my answer, but you go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, so can I bring my iPod? Right, right. Yeah, we, we hear that a lot. It's, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, I, I've got a friend that does it, or I've got, you know, let me tell you, I'll tell you about an experience that we had. It was down in Florida, and it wasn't me. It was a, a, a DJ of mine was in a wedding down there. So we weren't the DJ at all. Um, he went down there, and it was a friend of the bride that was DJing the wedding for him. And when they went down there to do this, the um, DJ basically came in, sat behind his booth, um, and really didn't do nothing. And my DJ basically, in the end, they ended up, he ended up running the whole event. He was in the wedding. <laughs> but once the wedding party started and they got right. to the reception, he basically had to take over. They ended up sending that guy home and they played through a Bluetooth house system in the video. Oh, yeah. Sharon, does that sound familiar? I know sometimes when I go to... Weddings, you kind of look around. We've been at one or a couple even together, and we're like, um, who's lining these people up? Right. Like, right. It's going to rain start in two minutes. Right. It's hard to actually be a guest without all that stuff running I actually, um, I just changed my contract, um, well, first of the year. Mm -hmm. And it now says in my contract that the DJ has to be a professional DJ, licensed and insured. Sure. Because of exactly that. I right. mean, I'll be real. People that listen to us a lot know I'm pretty blunt. And my answer to can I have a friend play music is hell no. Right. Not with my name on your hell nose. To the no. Hell to the no. Absolutely. Because, again, they don't know what they don't well, know. Well, and that DJ, again, like playing the music is huge. That's a huge part of it. But it's literally like, to me, not even the most important part. I think the hardest part for a DJ, the hardest part of their job is reading that crowd, knowing, oh, they're not dancing to this type of music. Let me switch it up and Absolutely. play this yeah. type of yeah. music. For sure. Interacting with that crowd, running the night, inter right. you know, introducing the toast, the cake right. cutting, the first dances, yep. Yep. Um, knowing when a bride and groom are dancing and they're done and they want that song cut, you can read their eyes and you know when to cut that song. I think that those are the things people don't think of when they're hiring a, a DJ. Like, it's an important hire. Well, and another thing is not just the personality of the DJ, but the equipment itself. Oh my God. I've yes. been to a wedding and it was very nice, spent lots of money, and the, the equipment was squealing and you know, I mean it was just not a good good sure. fit for them. Right. And afterwards I've heard so many comments about that DJ. And that just that's just something that you've got to live and learn and you've got to not and I think it was a friend, mm -hmm. but that shows right there. And they lived and learned that, no, we wish we would I even had a client that wanted a friend to do it and said, well, we'll rent equipment. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, so let's have somebody show up and use equipment that they've never used before. Well, and my question, too, is, and again, they, Mike and Christina tease me all the time because if we don't have anything to worry about, I'll make something up. Sure. Like, I'm the, the, amen to that. Amen. I'm, the worry, I'm the worrier. Yeah. But it's kind of my job, too. And yes. I want to know, if your computer crashes, do you have another one you can just pull out? Can we keep rolling? Are we done for the night because your computer crashed? Yeah. Like, what do, you, what do you recommend couples ask as far as equipment? Well, I mean, you nailed it right there. Do you have backup equipment? So, you know, when we sit down or, or, or a bride calls me and tries to talk to us about the wedding, it's like, Okay, here's what all we do, um, and then once we get into the music portion of it, it's like, look, everything's computerized, so we use MacBooks for everything. We have backup MacBook that we bring, so we have two MacBooks that come to every show. We have an iPad that comes to every show. So we've got three forms of really music, right. and if worse comes to worse, I mean, 
God forbid, but we have our iPhones that would work as well sure. if we had to be in an emergency. I mean, if three go down in one night, something's up. Something's wrong. <laughs> the you world's know? ended. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but, but as far as like equipment, I mean, we have backup mixing boards, we have backup speakers, we have backup cables. You've got, you cannot, you know, and, and back to your renting, you know, you know, point there that if you rent it, you know, you can go to a, a shop and rent it, but you get one cord, you get one mixer, you get two speakers. If any of that fails, you're done. I mean, you're part of it. And rental equipment probably has not been well cared for. Not at all. Because no one owns it to put care into it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I've been there. I mean, when we first started, we were going to a shop locally yeah. and renting all of <laughs> sure. our equipment. And I mean, that's just how we started. I mean, I started with cassette tapes. I mean, my first one was on cassette now tapes. Now he's dating himself, oh, isn't I know, right? <laughs> I mean, it was cassette tapes. We would queue it up and then we would have to Please take the tape out, put our pinky in there, kind of turn it back just mm-hmm. a little bit so you got a little bit. I mean, it's, it, but it's, a, we had to rent everything. So when you're talking about equipment, mm-hmm. because people listen to us from all over. Sure. And, one of the things I hear you say is ask, what backup equipment do you bring? Yeah. And not just, oh, we bring a backup computer, because you just said cables, speakers, things can happen. Right. I know you personally have trailers. Yep. Um, you know, is it on site? Mm-hmm. You know, so I love that about the backup equipment, and especially things being computerized. I'm definitely familiar with computers. Mm-hmm. I think that's important to know, okay, not only backup laptop, but you also have a tablet, things like that. There's nothing wrong with computerized music. Like you said, I don't even know if people realize until it comes to it that most people is all computerized. Sure. So backup equipment. What about insurance? What about, do you feel like that a person should ask before they book a DJ, are you insured? Because license isn't really, I mean, you can ask where they're, if they have license or their accreditations and things sure. like that. Yeah. But I think one of the important things there could be insurance. Absolutely, yeah. You definitely need to ask, are you insured? Um, you know, we we are insured. We are insured um, for every event we go to. So, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So, you know, for some reason, a... You know, you didn't take down a cord or hide a cord good enough if someone trips over it. You know, you've got to be kidding. They hurt themselves. you got to be covered for that. If a speaker falls over onto some little kid because they're playing around with it or whatever, you got to be covered for that. A so lot of venues now, I know. You have to have it. You have to Because as a wedding planner, I get asked to turn all that in. To yeah, all I that to turn all yeah, that in. Yeah, I have to fax them yeah. every so often. I have to get my, my they insurance require it. to send them a form yeah. saying, hey, these a guys certificate are insurance. of insurance. Absolutely, yes. yeah. So that is huge, huge. So Todd, what if I'm I'm interviewing a DJ and he says, I'm going to need your venue's Wi-Fi password for the night. Is that a red flag to me? Absolutely. Yeah. Why is yeah. that? Well, you know, I, having internet access is nice. Okay. So, you know, I hear a lot of DJs make a playlist before they go to a show. We are 100% against that because every show is different. Every wedding is different. So you don't know what you're going to play. Again, that experience to read that crowd. Absolutely. So, you know, so back to, you know, your Wi-Fi, if, you know, Wi-Fi is nice, but if they are 100% depending on Wi-Fi, if that crashes for the night, what are they going to do? If they stream all their music during the event? If they stream all their music during the event, what happens if their Wi-Fi goes down? I right. mean... You know, all I actually, when I first started, had that happen. Yeah, and and, you know, and and some people probably don't think about things like this. You know, bride and grooms are one hundred percent budget conscious. You know, and they'll call us and they'll say, "Well, how much is it?" We'll tell them our prices, and then they'll be like, "Well, you know, I'll let you. I'll I'll get back with you, and I'll check in with them a couple of days later." Like, yeah, we found somebody cheaper. And I'm thinking, you know, cheaper is not always the best thing. But I'm getting off track there. But back to the Wi-Fi. No, that really all plays in. No, that's that's good. Yeah, that's good. Because when bride and grooms, and this is why we do this podcast, we want to teach bride and grooms what they need to do and what they need to look for for every vendor. Sure. And And this is very important because... I mean, you have no clue. If, they don't care if you have Wi-Fi. They don't care if you just have to plug it in the wall. They don't care if you just come in and turn on a radio. They want music. Right. But there are so many more details that needs to go into it 
than just that. So Mike, Sharon, we've always talked about how much we hear people say, I never thought about that until I heard you all say it. Mm -hmm. And you said something while ago, and I think this should be noted. Ask DJs that you're talking to if they stream music during the event. Now, when you all were talking about this, I think to myself, well, what if somebody requests a really old song or, you know, something that I just wouldn't happen to have? I could see where having Wi-Fi, it's not a make or break. God forbid that be, you should not definitely be downloading or streaming any of you your dances. Correct. So I thought that was really important that you said that. But really, if they want a certain song, they should tell you that way in advance. Well, if, if a have... guest requested that. Oh, okay. They yeah. should. Now, speaking of that, sorry, but that's my mic off. So <laughs> Don't worry, usually Sharon does that in every episode. <laughs> you're good. So speaking of that, you know, I'll get into this in a little bit, but we do an I request now, so we can talk about how requesting songs work. But um, I like to think that we have... 95% of every song out there. Now that's probably a little high, but... And that also comes with how long you've done sure. it as well, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you've got yeah. a huge library. A huge library. But also the fact that, you know, we can download, even though we're computerized, if a guest comes up and says, hey, you know, you got this song or whatever, and, you know, for some odd reason we don't, I can download it via my cell phone, hotspot, right. or whatever. So I don't really, really rely on the Venues hotspot yeah. or venues Wi-Fi, so I can download a song and have it played in about two minutes. I know as we're talking about equipment, another thing that um, my clients never think about until the DJ mentions it or I mention it is lighting. Sure. Oh, good. There are so many different lighting packages that you can get, and you know, I've I've had clients that are like, "Oh, I didn't think about that." Right. But. Talk to us a little bit about lighting and what a professional DJ will bring in terms of lighting and what why you want that. Sure, sure. So, you know, there, there's going to be probably people that, that may listen to this and think this, you know, this is kind of one-sided. But here's my thought. Here's my opinion. Everybody has their own, but this is my opinion. Lighting is important no matter what the bride or groom may think. Lighting is important. It sets the mood. It kind of, sh you know, just the atmosphere of everything once the dance floor opens. Um, but lighting, we use all DMX computer controlled lighting. We use Chave. There he goes with those fancy terms. I know. <laughs> My husband used to DJ and I know the word Chave. Right, I know. Right, oh, yeah. right. So we use, you know, moving heads. We use wash lights. We use, you know, but everything is computerized. So we have to go into a venue we have to aim the, the lights to where they're going to go, how they're going to you know, perform, and we set this all up. So lighting is huge, but you know, there's, there's, there's lights out there that just they come on, and the inside has a motor, and they move left and right, and that's all they do, and it's, it's just, you know. It's but what you, what you just talked about, though, I don't know that people realize there's ways you set them, where you sure. set them, how they move, everything like that. And most of the time, professional DJs have worked at a lot of the venues mm -hmm. where they're located to know how things are going to look. It's not really their first time. And I also feel like I've heard people saying about going out, hey, that's a newer venue. I haven't went there. I want to go as a vendor. I want to go check it out and have a plan ahead of time. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they yeah. also, when they go, because I know I've done venue tours with DJs, mm -hmm. They're looking at things that I'm not necessarily looking for. I've learned to look mm -hmm. where, you know, you can't just say, I'm going to put the DJ against this wall if there's no outlet. Correct. Like, you might, you want to make sure how far those speakers are from guests because they're going to blow them out of their chairs. They so, are? <laughs> you, oh, yeah. You don't say grandma by the speaker. I've oh, learned gosh, that. <laughs> and, uh, but then you also have to make sure that they have electricity, that they have what they need. Are they going to need a table? Do they bring their own? you know, DJ booths, that kind of stuff. There's a lot that goes into it. Well, Todd, I want to ask you too. I mean, I know you were talking about lighting, but there's a lot of times brides will come to me and I'll supply lighting for around the room. Up lighting. Up lighting. Yeah. I want to make sure that our guests know that the lighting around the room and the lighting that comes off the DJ booth or however the stage or sure. whatever, that's two different things, but you supply both. Absolutely. Right? 
Yeah, 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 we do it all. I mean, a lot of times people think when you say lighting, and I've talked to brides before, is they think it's just, oh, the DJ's going to take care of the lighting because it's going to be shooting off your stage or spinning lights or whatever. That's a really good point. But you also take care of the room, setting the whole mood for the room, and that's a big thing. Well, that's that's a, lighting and dance lighting. Yes, it's two different things. There's the point right there I was getting ready to say, because, Mike, the up lighting you're talking about, that kind of goes with the whole decor, how Correct. you're setting up the rooms. Right. Good and point. a lot of DJs, you know, do all that. Sure. They, they, and, yeah. and I'll be honest with you, I've kind of gotten out of that. I've said, yeah, I'll take care, talk to your DJ. They'll do all that for you. So, I mean, it just makes it a lot easier for me. So, sure. one of the things that I had written down, Sharon, I know you have some events that, and maybe a, quite a few of your events, but I know you've talked about this before. People are doing their ceremony and their reception at the same place. Mm-hmm. And I think there could be some assumptions that happen. Well, I've got my DJ, you know. Do they have enough equipment for both areas? Are they going to have to move equipment during the ceremony into the reception? Like, those are things I would The think. last thing I want as a planner is all that damn clanging and banging. Right. Uh, you notice I was looking at her when I was saying this, but oh, you know where I'm talking about. Yeah. That's I mean, disruptive. It's with something your I, to- I totally will ask because I don't want all that ruckus going on. Well, let, let me say how many yeah. times I've, I've talked to a bride and they're like, okay, well, you know, I'm looking for a DJ for my wedding. I'm like, okay, great. They wedding. want you to roll your stuff yeah. right in. Wedding no. and reception, and they're like, they're like uh, yeah, it's wedding and reception. Okay, okay, so is it in the same room? No. Great. Who's taking care of your ceremony music? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I never thought about that. Yeah, or you're not. Yeah, 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 yeah. That too. That's what I was talking about. Those assumptions. Yeah. Yes. But uh, I would say probably ninety percent of the people I talk to, if I say who's doing your ceremony music, they're like, oh, I never thought about that. Or oh, we have we have a string quartet, or we have a live musician. Great. Who's going to mic the the efficient so that everybody can hear you? You know? Oh, I never thought about that. So I mean, there's just a ton of things that. You know, it just people don't think of that if they don't hire the right DJ service, it's going to be I a just nightmare. had a conversation literally yesterday with a bride mm-hmm. who did not understand why her DJ was charging her a little extra for right. extra speakers for cocktail hour. Right. Because she said the ceremony will be over. Why can't he just bring the ceremony equipment to the cocktail hour? And I'm like, through the middle of your guest. I'm like, well, and that's going to take about 20 minutes. Sure. So you so can, tell your guest to go sit in the car and come right. back. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, he's absolutely going to charge you for extra speakers. You need the it. it, it and you know, to us, it's silly. Sure. But we oh, do yeah. this for a living. This is how we take care of our families. To them, you know, it's not right. because they don't do this. And I think that's, again, where we just, on our podcast, we drive education so hard because you don't know what you don't know. Right. And she said to me, oh, I didn't think about that time. Sharon, you put her thinking, being present at her event. Truthfully, she wouldn't want 20 minutes to pass, but she uh-huh. had never actually thought oh, through right. it. Right. That's why I wanted to ask Todd about... I'm assuming, and I'll ask, there definitely should be two different sets of equipment. No matter if it's sometimes three. Three, if you got a cocktail hour. Because you move equipment, things can happen. You've already said it's computerized, you've got right. lighting involved. You it could be a recipe for other problems, not just the time of moving it. Sure. Yeah, you've gotta have like uh, we have three sets. So we can do three rooms mm-hmm. every night. Each trailer has the same capabilities. So you've got to be able to have a ceremony area, a cocktail area, and a reception area. You know, ceremony and cocktail doesn't take a huge system to make that happen. But you've got to be able to have But that. you have to have something. Sure. And as far as, you know, moving things, I just had a conversation with one of our brides coming up. And she's like, well, we'd like to add music to our cocktail now. But our, our ceremony is going to be out here in the field. And then we're going to have a cocktail hour. She's like, can you just move it? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to just right. move it. I'm going to set up a system out there. I'm going to set a system right. in the cocktail area. And I'm going to set up a system in the reception area. Once the wedding ceremony is over, I'll strike that. But music is already mm-hmm. playing as your guests are walking towards it. It just... The flow is so much better. Yes. There's not a break. There's not stuff being moved around. Right. I know that makes Sharon twitch. When you talk about moving stuff with customer, with uh, well, people don't people understand it's, it's big equipment. I mean, those yeah. speaker mm-hmm. poles are 
Yeah. What? Seven, eight feet tall yeah, sometimes. Right. Well, plus that you're delayed on moving stuff because you, you have to be, excuse me, excuse yeah. me. If you can just think for a second and put yourself there as a guest, that whole experience would be affected by moving stuff. Well, I mean, yeah, to that point, I mean, if, if there's times where I've got a guy doing a ceremony and a, and a guy doing the reception, and when the ceremony is over, you know, they're trying to, sometimes they don't even strike that first system. They leave it there for a while. Mm-hmm. And just them trying to make their way back to the reception, if you didn't have, I mean, sometimes just getting to that crowd is, is right. a long yeah. time. That brings up another point. Uh, and we did a wedding like this not long ago where the DJ set up in the pub till hour, mm-hmm. the ceremony, mm-hmm. and the, the, uh, the reception. But something else that you got to keep in mind is when it's time to tear down. And if you've got 45 minutes to an hour to get tear down after the wedding's over, the bride sometimes has to think about that. Is it enough time to tear down everything? And they may have to buy an extra hour. Sure. Because you don't want your DJ not, you know, even if there's two DJs, and talk, we can talk about this too, but even if you have two, they're there for a, a reason. Yeah. Not one to be over tearing something down from another space. And um, allotting enough time is really important. Well, when you walk into that cocktail hour space or from cocktail hour into your reception space, I know one thing I don't want is I don't want dead air. So if he's over there tearing a system down, who's starting the music in the reception? Or if something, you've got a playlist playing. What if something happens and it's, you can't just, people may think, well, oh, it's playing. He can walk away and be doing that or she. Not what if something happens? I will tell you, it gives me a little palpitation if I look up at the DJ <laughs> trust and there's no one there. Are you sure? Just a little? Just a little. Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. Todd. Let's so let's talk about. Is there any questions people should ask about one DJ or two who's showing up to do their event? Right. What kind of questions would go there? Well, we have a we have a pretty big team, so um, you know. Who's going to show up to do my event is probably a good question to ask. So they everybody you want to meet with that person, right? Correct. At some point yes. in time, yeah. not just the owner. For sure. Okay. So everybody that calls, emails, or whatever gets me. So when I'm talking to them, I always tell them, look, we have a big team. I'm not sure who's going to be assigned to your wedding yet. But as we get closer, we will assign that and those people will be reaching out to you, setting up a meeting to meet with you or talk to you, just kind of make you feel at ease. Um Back to the one DJ versus two DJs. Do you always do two? 100%. Okay, I thought 100%. so. Um, unless for some odd reason it's a birthday party. A smaller. Know, a small little birthday party or anything like that, an anniversary party, something that doesn't really need to. Every wedding, two people, no matter what. Is it cheaper if I did one? No, it's not. I'm still going to charge it the same. Our price is our Same price. equipment's coming? Same equipment's everything. coming. You're getting two people. Um, well, I think that's a positive for a bride and groom to be thinking about. I do, but why? I want to know why Todd is two people important. So two people are important for many reasons, but you've got to have a DJ and you've got to have an MC. Your DJ handles all the music. They take care. That's their only responsibility. Handle the music. No dead air. Absolutely no dead air. I can't stand it. And then your MC is I like one time. that's going to right. the MC. I told you you guys are kind of evil. <laughs> the MC is going to take care of you know they don't realize that like in, in our in our business the MC takes care of you know lining people up, introducing them, making all of their announcements, keeping the flow of the night going, making sure they have enough time to dance at the end of the evening, um, making dismissing tables. I mean, we go around and either dismiss tables, you know, table by table, or we we call them by table number, however the bride wants right. to do it. But the big thing is, is that, you know, when you only have one guy, I've got... Or a girl. Or girl, absolutely. When you only have one guy or one girl... <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a girl on your team, so. I've got multiple <laughs> girls on my team. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I've got three girls on my team. So, um, but when you go to that and you only have one guy, there's no one at the booth. So what happens if that computer just, for some crazy reason, just quits playing a song? I mean, things happen. So now you've got a guy that's in another room talking to a bride and groom and their bridal party getting ready to line them up, and now you have no music out here. And everybody's like, you know, what's going on? So two people, there's, I, I can talk No matter about two what people. happens, someone can keep something flowing. Yes. And keep the night moving. That's what I've noticed working with these 
DJ teams as much as I do is, <clears throat> like he just said, there's usually the DJ that's that's spinning their music, right. that's mixing and all that, but there's also that MC that's good on the mic. Sure. Sharon, can I get a little demonstration for you two? How would that spinning be? <laughs> but they, uh... I See, Todd, I told you I would say something I like that. I may be adding a fourth lady to my team. <laughs> hey, uh, me, me and Mike will talk to you soon. Okay, all right, all right. That's not a good idea. <laughs> um, Todd, because you would lose all control. Because <laughs> Sharon way, wants to make yeah. sure it's 100%. I'm sorry, Sharon. Anyway, <laughs> there's usually someone that's more comfortable on the mic. Oh, yeah. And to me, that's important because that's... That represents that wedding. Don't be making Sharon go grab that microphone. So, is there someone who's smooth on the mic, who's hey, comfortable? Hey, listen, I've got nine team members, and there's only three of us that are comfortable on the mic. Right. And I'm not going to, you know, you, I we can talk DJ stuff for all day long. I love talking to DJ. I mean, you yeah. can't. I will not put someone on the mic that has not been trained under me for at least six months. Yeah. Because. It's not just talking. Exactly. It's not just announcements yes. or reading names on a paper. Correct. Sorry, no, not sorry. They're an entertainer. Right. right. I mean, they yes. are an entertainer. Your personality, you yes. have to be able to adjust with the crowd you have. Bubbly, all uh, excitement doesn't always I mean, I worked with one DJ people. about a year ago, and God love his heart. Like, I just God wanted to go up to him and him. say, sweetie, this is not for you. Right. <laughs> he had the personality. To say, he literally would get on the mic and be like, okay. Now's the first dance. And and sure, was more than each other. They're like, is this really happening? Like, it, you know. Because That's when you split up, put out the spin signal. Exactly. Like the signal, and then we'll come running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, and like, I know like with bridal party introductions, that's one of my favorite parts of the night. I like to go to the DJ meeting and I'm, that makes me all excited. Yeah. And that's when you're going to hype up that crowd and that's when you're going to get it going. Yeah. That sets yeah. the tone. So if you're going, okay, now we're going to announce the bridal party. Yeah. It sounds like you're at a corporate event. You well, know, we like need somebody it. to right. have some personality. If, if you come to this wedding, all right, this wedding oh, reception is supposed to be a big party at the end, you know. What you know who you are out there, so please change your attitude. <laughs> right, right. So just think about it like this. If you go to, if you're at a, at, at a wedding reception and the, the, the MC comes on and says, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, here's a few announcements for the evening. We're going to do this, do that, do this. Or you, you know, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, you know, I mean, it's just a huge, it's a tone. Totally it's different. A, it's a totally, totally different. different. And I just, look, I, I, we aren't, I, I'm going to toot my own horn and not toot my own horn at the same time. Doo -doo. Right, right. So, in my opinion, we're the best out there. But I know there are people that do things better than us, and I know there's people that do things a lot worse than us. So I'm not so... Uh -huh you know, sold on we're the best, but uh, I mean, you're going to be taken care of and your party is going to be 100% good. I mean, you've you honed your craft for umpteen years. Right. There's a reason you say that. Sure. Now we have people that believe it or not, listen to us in other countries. Now I'm not saying that you can't have spin come do your event. You can contact Todd about that. Todd has but luggage. Todd has supplied so much information for you to take and ask questions of people that are local. Now, if you want to reach out to Todd, that's up to you. Sure. But Todd, with what you're saying, you've got years of experience to hone your craft, mm -hmm. build your teams, and run your business the way it is. So you have every right to say what you said. Right. And, and you know, I, I am always huge on telling everybody, look, we have done probably enough wedding shows that I can count maybe on one hand, but possibly no more than two. I've not done wedding shows since we've started. It was t-shirts, business cards, and word of mouth. That's it. Um, we do, like I said, we, we just did a couple wedding shows just because. Um, but I can probably honestly count on two hands how many wedding shows in the past 20 years we've done. I just don't do it. It's such a relationship-based business. Right. Like word and, of mouth is... Yeah, and, and I get it. I mean, wedding shows are good just because you keep your name out there and stuff. But, I mean, I've got nine people on our team and I mean we're doing 125 shows a year I don't I mean I don't want to sound like arrogant but I don't need more shows but I'll take more shows you here, know I mean? here locally sure. don't be surprised you don't see spin right around sound at wedding shows sure. and there's a reason for that not because you don't like wedding shows right it's not something you need so that's right. but right. what I, one of the things that I just want to talk about you gave an example in your voice 
And it really made me think about, it's so important to make sure you click, you click with that person that's going to be doing your event. Not because you're gonna be hanging out at your wedding. You are expressing to them what you want out of that event. Are they listening to you? Are they gonna take that in and remember it? That, that is what I mean by you want to make sure your personalities, you click, they're listening to That's you. That's the most important thing yeah. right there. Oh, I, I think the DJ meeting. Yeah. It, like you were talking about, um, I always, about six weeks out, eight weeks out, I'll start doing final vendor meetings. Mm -hmm. and, and the DJ is definitely on the list of people I want to, let's grab a cup of coffee, let's sit down with this bride and groom. Because at that moment, that DJ is going to help them craft their night. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they, they're down to three first dance songs and they can't pick one. Who better them. than you? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that DJ meeting with the person that is actually going to be DJing your event is huge. Yeah. I don't want to zoom it. I right. mean, I, we, we did right. when we had to. Sure. That's over. Yeah, exactly. I want it in person yeah. to get those personalities clicking so everybody feels good going into the night. Right. Todd, right. I had one other thing written down that I wanted to ask about. We talk so much about toast, introductions, Mike and the officiant. Uh, is there questions that you should ask about microphones? Like, I'm pretty positive, but again, I'm not a specialist in this. Pretty sure most people have wireless microphones. But is there any questions that couples out there should ask of their DJ? I mean, I, I would always ask, you know, how are you going to mic the efficient? How if are, they're doing this yeah, yeah. yeah, how are you going to MC? How's your MC going to mic the reception? You know, is it all wired? Is it wireless? What is it? And then if they if the answer is wireless, okay, great. Is it you know a hundred dollar wireless mic or is it a eight hundred dollar wireless mic? Now, why would that question be important? Well, because of the range, the sound, everything. You know, I get I get people upset. You know, they'll be out there dancing and they're like, "Hey, can I use your mic?" I'm like, "No." no. I mean, they don't understand. This is a. You, there's a, probably been a few drinks involved. Yeah, for a second, this is a thousand dollar microphone. If you drop it, that's. I mean, you it's know, probably gonna mess So it now up. I've got a three hundred dollar, four hundred dollar mic that I don't care if they use. But no, you're not using my microphone. Well, I've got to tell you the story. We did a wedding down at Gillespie one day, and uh, one weekend, and they had a friend doing the DJ stuff. Sure. The DJ rented a cordless mic. Oh, Lord, they've never even touched it. They could equipment. not even figure out how to fix this up. So here, down at the glass, you've got curtains. Mm -hmm. yeah, the minister yeah. shows up, or the officiant shows up, was putting this mic on and could not figure out how to turn it on. And what does he say out loud? And he, it was on, and nobody knew it was on. And he says, how the hell do you turn this effing thing on? And it went all over the Gillespie. Oh. While the guests were there? While the guests were there. The bride and groom was getting ready to walk down the aisle. Yeah, because typically the official will come up to you until 10 yeah. minutes before. Yeah. Like, hey, mic me up. But <laughs> that shows, again, how important to have a professional there to make sure it's sure. done correctly. Right. Are you using your own equipment, or do you have to go and rent equipment? There could be a red flag when you're asking. I had a DJ. Equipment. I was down in Bardstown. Uh, they've heard about this wedding since we started this podcast. Um, but I was down in Bardstown and DJ I'd never worked with before. And I asked him if he was going to have a mic for the officiant. He said, yes. And, you know, wedding planner fail. I didn't ask what kind of mic. Right. And I walk in and I'm like, is my officiant mic'd and ready? And he said, yeah. And I look up and there's a microphone stand. Oh, yeah. Right, right between where the bride and groom's going to go and the mic on. Is that a problem? Yes. And I was like, yes. I was like, excuse me, like, excuse me, this is going to be in every one of their photos. And he goes, well, that's all I've got. But right there, yeah. would the bride and groom have even thought about that being in their photos? No. So I just told him to talk real loud because right. I didn't want that. That's going to ruin their photos. Yeah. So Todd, the other thing about venues with wireless microphones is how, how big the space is. Like you said, the range and everything. And you get new equipment. You talked earlier about squealing or whatever the technical term is that it makes. You're given a toast, or it's during the ceremony. That can be very distracting, yeah. and it can really kill a moment. Okay, and yes, and, and to your point, another question you can ask then is how long or what time would you be setting up for the event? Who's are you going to show up 30 minutes before the event? Or are you going to set up two hours, three hours? What, what is... When are you going to be there? 
So typically, I like to be there two hours at the least. So, um, you know, and it just depends on how big of a production it is. Well, you've got one system to set up yeah, or three. Yeah. Or, yeah, if I've got one system to set up, it's just a, in one room I can, I can set up in two hours. I bet you're going to say, because you can walk around and test the microphone yes. or the, or the yeah. uh, officiant. Yes. Or, yes. because like you said, he might not show, he or she might not show up until 10 or 15 minutes before. Correct. But that doesn't mean you could, or someone couldn't have put it on. And again, it just comes down to hiring that professional mm -hmm. that does this for a living, that knows what they're doing. Right. We could really talk about this. I mean, more questions Good. are coming in my head as we talk. To point, to about it. Hey, of, he's not very far away, so <laughs> I know we can get him to come back in. Absolutely. So to the point, too, is the efficient. It's always best when your DJ is the efficient because then they're already there. Just <laughs> It's something to ask. Yeah, that's that. another topic too. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, really yeah. good. Because I've got ordained, you know, our DJs were ordained, so we do we do a little bit of everything. That's, that's kind of cool. So. Yeah. Okay, Todd. Before we wrap this up completely, I know you introduced yourself a little bit at the beginning, mm -hmm. but will you take just a couple minutes to share with our audience even more details about Spin? What all you offer? The areas yeah. you service, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Um, so we offer we we offer of course DJ services. Uh, efficient services, photo booths. Uh, we've got live musicians that we work with that we can help you plan. We've got photographers. We've got um, videographers. We've got planners. I mean, just like you two here in the room for us, but we've got all types of different areas. So I tell all my brides, look, ask me any question at all. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's not about DJ service. Ask me. I'll You've help been in you. the industry yeah. so long. Sure. Yes. So, you know, but we offer all, I mean, anything that you need, we can have it covered. Um, you know, we bring backup equipment to everything. Our reviews speak for themselves. I, I haven't checked Facebook the last time, I mean, or, or Yelp or whatever, but the last time I looked at our Facebook reviews, there was, I think, maybe 80 reviews on our business, and I, we're still a five star review company. That's a huge That's awesome. That's, That's amazing. Guys. That's yeah. huge. So, you know, we service, I'll, I'll go wherever. Yeah, I really will. We've been uh, to Cincinnati, we've been to Nashville, we've been to Muncie, Indiana, we've been, um, uh, let's see, where else have we been? West, East, that's probably it. So, I mean, uh, we'll really, I mean, we serve the whole area. Oh, Prestonburg, Kentucky, mm -hmm. right on the edge of West Virginia. We wow. went down there for a New Year's Eve party. Um, people can inquire from anywhere yeah, depending yeah. on availability because yeah. I know some people are even doing destination sure. weddings and sure. stuff now so that's yeah. always good to know yeah and, and I you know I, I, I worry a little bit about destination weddings because unless you can take your equipment out there you have to rely on renting the equipment and then that comes into a whole other you know a photographer or a videographer they can take a couple bags and, and do destinations we've never done a destination I'd love to do one um, but you know, I would have to be honest with the bride and groom if they called me and said, Hey, we're going to get married in Oregon. Would you come out there and teach it? I'd love to, um, but I'd want to bring my own stuff. Right. Sure. I, I would want to. Oh, you don't want to rent equipment? No. I think we I, just I, talked I, about I, that during the whole yeah, episode. We did, did, we? We did. We did. So, you know, but we've got, um, you know, we've got, like I said, nine, nine people on our team. You know, what if someone gets sick? If you hire a DJ, then it's just a one man person or a two man what if one of them gets sick? I mean, what's your backup plan? That goes back to, I'm getting too off topic. We can spend another <laughs> no, good, no, so for anybody that wants information, I just want, yeah. give them your website. All of the details, you can connect with them on social media. Website will be in the show notes, but your website? Uh, it's spinaroundsounddj.com. Awesome. Todd, the information that you have given us today has been amazing. So our listeners should walk away with here from here from with lots of information. So thank you so much yeah, for being here. Yeah, and, and to your point, you know, to the listeners out there, if you don't want, I mean, if you've already had a DJ and you have questions like, hey, what should I call me? I mean, I'll be happy to answer whether you're using someone else or not. You know, That's awesome. listen to this post or listen to this podcast and they're like, hey, I never thought about that. I'd like to know more about what he's talking about. Call me. I, I don't, you know. It's no big deal if you're not using us. I'll still help you. Team That's bride. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Team bride or team couple. Well, That's right. Todd, thank you so much. Thanks I knew you would us. provide a bunch of insight. Yeah. I, I feel like I even have more questions I do too. from this episode. Part two. 
Part two? Part we, two. Sounds part like two. part two's <laughs> coming. So. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for Thank coming. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, for all our listeners out there, we greatly appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. And Sharon, what do you always tell them? If you like what you hear, hop on and leave us a glowing five-star review. We love them and appreciate them. And even if you like Todd right. and Spin Around Sounds, you can still leave us a glowing five-star right. review. Yeah. Right, Todd? Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys.